nano templates and nano generally means that we're working with carbon based products uh, carbon's really nice because uh, it works really well with the octet rules geometrically speaking it's a really beautiful um, fabric to work with when you're looking at the mesh network or the, the um, orbital interactions between elements so um, right now <coughs> right now we're looking at uh, I was looking at the wall here uh, I have wood walls and you know I was looking at kind of a different way of approaching it when you're looking at trees trees are generally growing from uh, a diameter of, of zero and it expands its radius uh, with every second of time down to the uh, down to the um, quantum uh, down to the quantum the quantumization of that second uh, which is pretty much um, helical but anyway as uh, the as it comes out as life comes out of that helix uh, from the micro to the macro of a second uh, then it can, can expand its radius. Uh, so what is interesting about that, you know, I'm looking at this wall here, and then also let's take a look at um, what I was working with over here as well. Uh, so generally you're working with a radius that starts here, and here we've established our range, and we've said, okay, our radius starts at 1, and it goes as at an increment of 0.2 all the way to 4. So what that means is pretty much establishes the major steps there. And so you can look at um, kind of a tree stepping out from the inside. And that's what's really beautiful about nature and a tree specifically with mathematics and the mathematics of growth or of trees uh, where the nature is coming out of the wall so to speak or it's coming out of the of the of the wood or it's coming out of from the center and uh, so we start here and generally we'll start with a spindle and a spindle is um, round it's pretty much the unit circle uh, with a radius of 1, generally equilateral around all points as the definition of a circle. Uh, or I should say where the location of uh, 45 degrees is equal uh, at every quadrant as it would be expected. But anyway, um, the what was I saying? Uh, oh yeah, the spindle. So basically, out of the spindle, and spindle is also what ties together the chromosomes and things like that. So it's basically the we can look at you know kind of that as sort of the beginning, but also of our gear structure as well. Our gear structure has a somewhat of an, of an imaginary hole in the middle and uh, that's where our um, rotation of axis is axis of rotation is located so as you know the helix rotates and uh, then you get this really nice um, mathematics that ends up happening so what we're looking at here is the Gaussian and the Gaussian, I think I have another one open. The Gaussian in a two-dimensional graph looks like this. And uh, as you see, you know, if I, if I move, I can't really move the screen over here, but 
you know, I can kind of click and you can see that, you know, each line here is represented by um, one of these uh, curves where, you know, we're looking at starting with one to the range of four, just like the other one. And this one, however, you know, I set it to a step of 0.1 as opposed to the other one, which was 0.2. So this one has a uh, double the number of grooves here, or the number of lines. And so, I mean, I was looking at this, and it kind of inspired me. First, I was, well, first I was looking at the wall. Actually, first I was looking at, I was just looking at everything. I'm always looking at everything. But anyway, um, so you can see, you know, it starts here, goes up here. So this is going to be the closest face. And then over here, it's going to move farther away. And so, you know, down here, we can consider that as kind of the back. So this whole thing here is going to be around the, uh, around the contour of a circle or around a larger circle. And, uh, you know, that's a whole other aspect of itself. But essentially, you're looking at the way that life grows in terms of a tree. I don't know, I wasn't really thinking about, thinking about anything else quite yet, but in terms of a tree, uh, it pretty much is like that, where you have the, the kind of revolves around the tree, kind of wraps around the tree, but then it also grows upward as well. It's not just growing in radius sideways, it's growing upwards. And in fact, it's actually growing upwards more so than it's gonna grow sideways. And that's what makes the trees look the way that they do. So the trees, you know, trees could grow horizontally if the mathematics was different, but it isn't. That the mathematics here proves that the trees are gonna grow like this. Uh, in this particular shape. So as you can see here, this is more of what is defined here. And then over here is where we have our our, our textures, what defines our texture or the, our surface texture, or really what what wraps as the shell. Uh, so we can you know, kind of look at this whole thing as like a shell. Now, uh, these parts are gonna, you know, kind of probably slim down there. That's probably going to slim down there. Or, you know, maybe it's going to wrap around here. We didn't really define what our our limits are on this side or on this side or, you know, what gravity does with our Gaussian. So, you know, we could look at what the force direction is. is. And the natural force direction of the tree is obviously always going to point this way upwards uh, due to the normal force that is you know opposite of gravity but then also with the applied pressure of life itself based on this Gaussian so the Gaussian itself would be the momentum for force or for this particular force in a tree uh, so there's no forces being applied to the side here so if there's no forces applied this way and there's no forces applied this way but there's just a force applied this way that most likely has an effect on the overall graph. So um, that's probably why these parts then go this way and that part goes that way. And if you remember one of my other videos, we were looking at, um, this is the Gaussian, uh, but we were looking actually, yeah, yeah, I remember now. We were looking at um, e to the y, or e to the negative y of cos times cosine of x. And that's a really nice partial derivative. Uh, so, but you can kind of see how like the mathematics are related, are related, especially when you start looking at, you know, what it looks like. But w w it's interesting because this one looks like that uh, particular graph, the e to the negative y, or e to the y, uh, cosine of x. This looks quite like that, very, very similar. Um, which I, I find really, really interesting. So this, however, this is gonna, this is the three-dimensional version of what, you know, what this is. 
Um, but this really quite explains what we're looking at. You know, this is really the two-dimensional uh, way that, you know, is going to grow. Well, I mean, they both are. But this is, you know, this is the two-dimensional version. This is the three-dimensional version. Um, but looking at it from this lens here, I guess from this side, uh, I don't know if it'll, let me see if I can look at the, um, view angles. So this is important. So right now we're looking at, this is a fixed 90 degree X. Right now, since we're looking at the three dimensional, it's our Z axis is going to be what is our uh, horizontal perspective from for us but generally you know the axis was fixed here and the X is normally what's the you know horizontal but in this case we're kind of rotating around the Z so if, if you remember Y X Z is this way Z is really what we're holding on to and moving around but the X is going to be fixed um, Y is set at seven degrees, so that's not really too different. That's and Z is eighty-eight degrees, so that means we you go know, like we rotated this way. I don't want to move it yet because I kind of want to go a little bit more into this bit. But I think oh right right okay so we basically rotated like a quarter turn and a quarter turn is quite interesting in physics because quarter turn also when you're applying to rotation a quarter there's like a rule to that it's like it's called the left thumb or the left hand rule or something like that where you, you rotate 45 degrees then something will come out from the inside so you know it's kind of like looking at how does the how does something bloom how does something emerge or how does something come out of a helix that's that 45 degree turn there so I rotated this 45 degrees and this is actually what we and let me pull this back up and this is actually what we observe on the wall here I'm looking at the wall it's made out of wood it's exactly what I see uh, identical and actually I was looking at the wood and I was thinking like, man what it would be I feel I just had this like short little vision here like I, I could just go into the wood and I could see the three-dimensional and I was like I've seen that before and then I went over here and I was like working and I was like wait a minute let me try to reconstruct it and I was like well here we go it only took me uh, it was like a maybe one minute or something like that but that was pretty really really nice because I wasn't expecting that at all that's a nice gift from nature. Nature is always wanting to share. It's not really share, but wants to be known as what it is. So, you know, trees are quite beautiful like that. It would, the only time that nature speaks to us in, in its beauty like that is quite amazing. So, anyway, um, right. So, what else I did here is I also. Uh, applied didn't really change the color too much and usually I'll change the color because um, it starts off with the checkerboard and I find that it's pretty interesting that you know that it does that and I think this is the reason for being that way is because this is the picture of a tree you know this is the colors that you would expect and obviously different trees or different wood but I have <clears throat> you know different hues or whatever but I was going through and actually the checkerboard is the most the most like the tree and although you don't see these little squares here these in the tree these little squares actually give more of the movement of what you would see in the tree or in the if you look at the you know if you look at a wall or you look at a wall made out of the made out of wood. Uh, you know, floors are a little bit different because you don't normally see floors that give you that nice big panel. So I'm looking. At, I have these walls here that are big panels of wood. So 
so you're able to kind of see more of the expression of what it really is of the nature I also applied a line as well I, I applied uh, and I can take it off to show you but so yeah I applied a line here and I just kind of filled it in a little bit but also what it what I really wanted was I wanted this part to be darker and I didn't apply any paint I didn't paint this at all this is all mathematics and if I take off the line it's still there so, but as you can see there's two different color options here um, a lighter and a darker so you can with a checkerboard you can kind of go through and pick two different colors but what I find super interesting is you know is I changed this line color and by doing so it kind of made this more concentrated I think that's what I did let me check no, it's not that. Let me see. You know, it might have just been. You know, it's hard to really like go back and remember what I did, but um, typically. Nothing. What did I do? Contours. Cause I was, I was messing with this, and I wasn't really like. Can't remember. But I did something. I did something, and this color changed. And I'm trying to figure out, and I thought it was this part. That looks the same. But all of a sudden, the lines, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Point is, you know what it might be? It might be the perspective. So right now, this is the perspective that's correct. This is the perspective that, is, let me even take a picture while we're doing this video. So let me. Okay. So basically, this is the real, this is the real of the tree. I'm going to move it around a little bit, and, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, so, basically, and as you can see here, that's pretty much what the tree is, so, you see how it grows here, and then it grows there, and it grows there, and it grows there, and it grows there, now, that's because I selected it at point two. I could go point one and it would do another line. It would go between these and between these. And that's basically how we get our time. Is that each interval of time, boom, is a line. Boom, is another line. Boom, is another line. And this is all based off of this Gaussian. You know, that's quite, quite beautiful. Um, now, the Gaussian, if we look at what it is, it's 10 over the square root of 2 pi, I don't know, I don't remember what this symbol is, but um, 2 pi something, and maybe like, um, okay, so anyway, 2 pi is basically our clock, and our clock is uh, always going to be based on the unit circle. And that's because that's where time comes from. It comes from that circle that we started off with with our spindle here. And it's divided by pi because that's where the seconds are. So we always go meters per second because without the meters, we wouldn't have the unit. So time itself is needs something to give it time to make it be time. So that's where we really then require. And if you look at my last video, I was talking about how we derive the meter cube. But basically, this 10, we can look at as the constant. We only need a number, but 10 is a good number. Because uh, of log, we can go log base 10. But not necessarily in this function. Uh, but we just need the, some sort of constant. And 10 is a great number. So, uh, meter cube, but we can really look at it like that, this whole thing. you know. But then it's the square root of 2 of 2 pi and that, but 2 pi 
times that, let's say it's one, or let's say it's two, let's say it's two, it's probably an easier number to work with. Two pi four, square root of four is two, so it doesn't, it doesn't really change anything. And, <coughs> excuse me, and our pi, we can kind of ignore pi for a minute, because pi is just one of those accompaniments. Uh, it's really something that we just use to, you know, kind of create that infinity or to create that quintessence. So, but we can really look at it like we don't even have to worry about the math for that really right, right, right now. But you know, generally speaking, we could pick a number so that is a perfect square. Uh, if we know this is this is we we'll say it's three. If we know this is three, three times two is six, and if we pick the numbers, in this case, we did six times four, or let's say six times, let's see, three, okay, six times three, uh, uh, it doesn't really matter, the point is this is the clock, okay? that's the number, and, and this is a really nice way of looking at it, um, anyway, that's our little clock, e to the negative x squared over 2, and it's that same number there, squared. Uh, now, we talked earlier, we said uh, it kind of looks like the partial derivative of, uh, or that we had earlier. Um, I think I can pull it up. Mm, this might be it, actually. Yeah, that's my partial derivative, and uh, I know it doesn't look like it. It looks like Gothic architecture, um, and it is Gothic architecture, but it's actually based off of the um, based off of a partial derivative e to the y cosine of x uh, applied over e to the negative y cosine of x. So e to the negative y, and then over here is y, that's why you have one on this side and one on that side. But basically, um, we have uh, e to the negative x squared, and it looks like this whole thing is the numerator. So uh, 2a squared, or it's not a, but I figure what it is. It might be also, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. x squared. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should isolate that and look at it. It's been a long time since I've been looking at these things, so I don't even know. But anyway, Euler is a really pretty number because. Whenever you're working with Euler, you're also working with, you know, these step functions. So you're saying, and, you know, basically it can also go to infinity if you like. Um, Euler is pretty because, it, you know, if you look at something like um, on defining Euler, uh, you would have to do, you know, you'd have to say, you know, you'd have to increase your step by one and do so for ever, for infinity, or for at least a range, a pretty large range, or at least for some range, it could be one to six if you wanted, but the point is, um, that's what's going to give you your, you know, Euler-based numbers. Anyway, I, I created the script to do that, um, and it worked, everything was great, I validated it, or confirmed it with the, um, with the Google, uh, but I just can't remember, it was, so, it was like months ago, so I can't like, you know, tell you too much, I forgot already, but anyway, what we have here is we have two directions, we have something that go up, that's going upward, and then we have something here that's going um, downward, so to speak. And I'm saying it's going downward because <clears throat> on this one, 
pi. Anytime you're working with pi, you can kind of think of pi as going downward. Because it's not really going downward. It's flat, you know. It's just the flat surface. But in terms of the quintessence of, you know, trying to run a pi sequence, it's not getting bigger. It's not getting smaller. You know, the, the circle doesn't change. Uh, the radius doesn't change. Nothing changes. But yet the string of pi gets longer and longer and the micro the decimal position of where you would be at the next that the next number of pi uh would be smaller would be the scale you know smaller so in this in that sense this is getting smaller and this is getting larger um in that in that sense so this is our spindle really we can look at it like that and uh, this is what's gonna. It, this is basically what establishes our time, or our timing cycles. So we're saying that the period is one to four, and then we're saying that the cycles is point two, or that the steps are point two. So, um, you know, it's different than the Euler steps, but uh, maybe not. You know, maybe it's be somewhat relatable. I don't know. Maybe this. I have to look at the Euler's. I better not. You know, saying anything wrong, but you know, I better look at that. Cause I already created it, but it's okay. Anyway, point is, it's quite beautiful. Um, to give us this. So, but as you can see here, it's hollow because the this the time in there wasn't filled. Now. In nature, it's the same thing. The time wasn't filled. You know, in the trees, if the, you know, we really get to see that the difference in one second to the next second to the next second, you know, it really doesn't have to. What creates the fill is the tree. It is the fill. It is the material. I mean, it is filled. But the actual steps, boom, 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 that's really what's going to be more of the heartbeat. And then, and that's also what's going to be, you know, giving us the definitions for these. So when I look at the color, you know, what makes this, that particular color stronger, like particular, like for example, in the seismic activity, you know, you could look at the trees like seismic activity or like, you know, currents and, and magma. I mean, it all looks really quite similar because that's the heartbeat of life. Even though the fill, you know, even though um, a second is the unit filled, and it's filled and the, all the way down to the most micro we won't even know we couldn't even find it because it's infinite but that to feel something at the most infinite micro is you know you can't really get you you have subatomic particles and you have things like that but even that is vibrating at the um you know along these spindles but even so the time that is that is that of, of the, the movement uh, or of you know what determines the change in position or how it may oscillate or you know just down to that micro difference there's still going to be fill between that so that's really what that that fill that that whole gaussian is really what gives you those um, those forces and gives you those, that fill of that of uh, what do you call of the um, of the nuclear uh, uh, what is it called? There's a name for it. Uh, you know, it's basically what holds things together. You know, and so. That's really quite beautiful. You know, it's one thing for things to be held together, but it's another thing for it to then, because it's held together, to live and then to express itself in life. So that's quite beautiful.
And as you can see here, you know, it's like walking. The mathematics is the same, but it's like walking, if I can find that particular angle. It's like walking through or walking down into sort of a, of a canal or like a, you know, this sort of, what was the name for it, um, Tron, like sort of like a Tron, like, but like kind of going into this sort of car racing, kind of, what was another one, like, uh, um, let me think, uh, retro, kind of like walking through there, as opposed to going up, you know, this is, it really gives you that, this, this side gives you the, that better perspective, but you see there like that. But then also you can see the texture, you know, and that the checkerboard really gives us that, that understanding is that you can see here there's all of these like almost these pores. And that's really quite true in nature because the pores is what's going to be what's allowing, you know, the electrons to flow through and, and this and that. And, um, even though the material itself is made up of the molecules, the molecules themselves, you know, are what's filling the pores, and that's what looks like the pores. So, you know, they could be filled, they could not be filled. The molecules all exist there, it's the same thing. Um, and if you take a look, if I rotate that, it's filled, it's not necessarily pores, but that that is what is the pore, you know? So is there really any space within a cell or within life? No, not at all, there's no space whatsoever. But you have these pores still. So that, you know, this was really quite interesting is that, you know, you're looking at the gold slit experiment, um, you know, an electron was shot out of a gold and that's really quite interesting because you can do that with ions as well and that um, makes the ions ionic um, and so it defines an ion but that doesn't actually create a pore that's just the molecule itself doesn't really uh, it, it, you know it just moves the subatomic particles so and then it changes the behavior or the characteristic of the whole material that you're observing. So there are no really any pores, and that's what's really interesting, you know, as a word. But anyway, um, yeah, Gaussian and word. I was so I was trying to create a library, so uh, for you know the textures and for my mathematics and everything. So. Uh, that's going to be really useful because we're going to want to apply this pattern, especially when we're working with wood. We're going to want to know how do we draw wood, what represents a tree, how do we draw a tree, and we're going to want to do it mathematically. And so this is the correct way of doing so. I, I believe in it. I, mean, I have no reason to say that it isn't. Uh, everything about it says that it is. Um, but it could be something else, you know, there, there could be all the mathematics, it's not just Gaussian, you know, it could be all the mathematics that is found in life or in nature, and then uh, we explore all of them and kind of see, you know, how a lot of them, you know, we see all sorts of mathematics, you know, like what causes something to move this way versus that way, so there's going to be a lot that happens based on this graph. And this graph is probably one of the most important graphs. And as you can see here, it's just general differential equations. Nothing really too special about it, except for the fact of what it is and of its identity. And this is really what's going to be the most important map that we could be working with, is our differential equations plus our vector field. And our vector field is going to be what determines that current going to be what determines our force, it's going to determine where we are, it's going, to be, it's going to determine how the universe looks and where it looks that way and why, and that's also what's going to determine the movements that we're going to see.
something like a gouge on it. So anyway, some some cool 